Hello and welcome back and in this uh, last and final uh, episode I'm um, just going to look, take a quick look at the concept of keyframing if you're new to that and also just briefly look at again the, I, the notion idea of either sticking with the uh, video uh, with the aspect ratio of the still image or making a duplicate of that file and cropping it down to the 720 by 1280 video aspect ratio. Right, so here's the folder that I bounced that last video out at um, animation high quality. And yes, as I kind of warned, it will be quite a kind of a big file and it's actually come out at uh, 5.74 gigabytes. So what we need to do is to open this up in a new Photoshop file. And just in order to do that, very simple, I'm just going to grab it and come over and just drop it onto the Photoshop icon and that's going to bring it in as a composite movie file and here it's added a new video group and it's put the actual video into that uh, little folder up over here so basically the concepts of keyframing are just points along the timeline that you can add in order to uh, denote where a change is going to begin and then where it's going to end. So in order to do this, as I said, what we're going to just quickly try and do is just maybe just to give a sense or illusion maybe of this kind of like of us zooming into it or it coming towards us. And in order to do that, just uh, what I've learned from experience is that it needs to be a much shorter video if you're going to do that, because even over the duration of one minute, even if you were to enlarge this up very aggressively, it's kind of very, very subtle, and it's come almost to the point where <laughs> it's almost like not worth doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this at the end of the uh, container here, and I'm just literally going to grab this back and put it in around about... 10 seconds. Alternatively, what I could do, I could just control click on it and change its duration to 10 seconds in length. So that's fine. Leave the speed exactly the same. So let's see what we've got. Right, so there we are with the sound. Now, in order to find the parameters um, to add keyframes to, you simply come over to the left here to the small little disclosure arrow here and just click on it and it toggles down and it gives you the parameters that you can change by adding keyframes. Now, I'm in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015 and in this particular version, Adobe for some reason have taken it upon themselves to make a slight change here because I think in 2014 and prior to that, there was another um, parameter here um, stacked underneath called transform and it's actually the transform parameter that we want to uh, add keyframes for. Now in Photoshop CC 2015, in order to invoke the transformation parameter, you need to come up and click on the actual movie layer and right click and convert to smart object. Now as I say, uh, Adobe and their in infinite wisdom have decided that's what you've got to do now in order to um, invoke transform. And again, if I just toggle that back off, yeah sure enough um, the transform parameter is now instantiated. So I'm just going to bring the playhead back uh, to the beginning and I'm going to just move to the left and click on the little stopwatch icon of, um, before transform and add a beginning keyframe and it shows that it's active because it actually is yellow that is if I was to make a change with the playhead over the keyframe and it is a highlight in yellow that's where the uh, change is going to begin so what I now want to do is just drag the playhead all the way over to the very end round about there and instead of clicking on the stopwatch again, uh, which I wouldn't recommend you do because <laughs> that's actually just going to delete this keyframe, just move again to the left to the diamond icon here and click on it and that adds another end keyframe. And again you can see it's yellow. This one's greyed out because it's not active. This one's now uh, yellow because it is the active keyframe. Now with the playhead uh, over the uh, keyframe here or with the keyframe selected so it's yellow I'm just going to now go make sure that the movie um, layer is selected and go command T for transform I am now going to grab the bottom right hand corner there and before I start dragging I'm going to hold down the option shift key to constrain it and I'm just going to enlarge that up and I'm going to do it very aggressively again just so that we can see some change taking place. I think I'm fine with that for now. I'm just going to hit enter to accept that change. I'm just going to hit the playhead, um, take it back to the beginning and we'll let it roll. Okay. 
Right, now as it plays back uh, in, along the timeline, it is going to be uh, appear to be um, quite juddery and not particularly smooth. And again, that's because of this whole um, render issue with uh, Photoshop having to uh, render the video as it goes along. So what I'm going to do, let's just take that back to the beginning. I'm just going to quickly bounce this out so we can take a look and come down to export. I'm going to come down to render video. And I am going to switch over from QuickTime to the H.264 because I just want this compressed so it's a smallish file and pretty quick. So we'll call this, I'm just going to call this keyframed selected destination folder. I'm going to put, yes, I created an H.264 folder so that's, that's where all the H.264 renders are going to go. I'm just going to quickly uh, bounce this out and we'll just wait for it to do its magic and we'll just come back and take a look at it playing as a quick time movie and then it's going to be a lot smoother so we can see what we've done. Right, now that uh, Photoshop has finished rendering that, let's take a look and see what this looks like. And let's see what we've got. Right, so let's now just uh, quickly return to our Photoshop file so we can do our final render out for deployment on the web. And before I do that, again, to give uh, myself the option of either retaining the aspect ratio of the actual still image or the option of having it cropped down to the 720 by 1280 um, video size, I'm just going to come up and come under image and come down to duplicate image and I'm now just going to rename this file I'm going to call this 720 version because that is what it's going to be at. okay and now this has come in as a duplicate of that file so with this now duplicated what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up to my crop tool and I am actually going to key in in the measurement parameter box up here 1280 by 720 so that's going to give me the crop I need and then it's just a question of maybe just dragging and moving the image uh, or video around within the crop boundaries just to kind of get you know it nicely balanced uh, as to how you want it so I reckon okay fair enough just around about there's fine and I'm just going to double click to accept that so now we've cropped it this obviously will now fit very snugly into a YouTube uh, player or a Vimeo player and unlike this one, which was the full frame version, which has obviously a different aspect ratio, um, we can upload it, but we will have to anticipate we're going to get a couple of big uh, black bars either side where it's, it's not going to fit into that 720 uh, by 1280 video player online. Right, I think we're now finally ready to render this out for um, sharing with the world. So I'm just going to come up to, again, File, Export, Render Video. Now I'm going to make sure I'm actually going to then rename this. I'm going to call it by the file name and just underscore H264 and just going to call it full frame to denote that it's different from the 720 by 1280. Going to come down to check that the media encoder is uh, switched to H264 for the code, proper codec and preset high quality. Document size, I'm going to leave it at this document size which is actually 1280 by 854 and also most importantly leave the frame rate at 30 frames per second because you don't want to kind of take it back up to 60 frames per second like the original video was because then that's just going to make it just like normal fast moving water. And it also won't play back um, properly or you'll get some kind of warning if you upload it to uh, uh, YouTube or Vimeo that, you know, it's not at its, uh, should be at 30 frames per second, blah, 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 blah. So it is. So let's just make sure we've selected the folder. I'm actually going to put it into the H.264 folder again and let's just render that out. Right, so after that's uh, finished rendering out, I'm then just going to quickly uh, go into the uh, 720 by 1280 crop version and also um, just render that out exactly as I have done here so we can take a look at the two. So right, here they both are. These are our two final uh, rendered alternatives for us to choose from. Obviously on the left is the full frame version and on the right is the uh, cropped 720 by 1280 version. 
and uh, with the uh, H.264 codec it was able to bring it down to a very nice manageable size the uh, full frame one was uh, came out just around about uh, 49 megabytes and the 720 by 1280 one came out around about uh, 44 megabytes so again easily manageable uh, for upload uh, onto the web wherever you may choose to say Vimeo YouTube so I think that's it for now that was it uh, how to create a uh, cinematograph combining a still image with uh, live action video in Photoshop. So at the very least I just hope it's may have given you some ideas to play around with. It's kind of a fun thing to do and as I say I mean you know you, it doesn't have to necessarily be water it could be anything uh, that's moving that you may want to combine with uh, a still image of the scene. It could be a time-lapse uh, movie of clouds moving across the sky that you could combine with the uh, a still image of the scene and really you know it's just a question of uh, you know experimenting and going where your imagination uh, will take you. So as I say, thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next go-round. Ciao for now.